Hello, role-playing people! In this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about making relevant storytelling backstories. I myself have been guilty countless times of making a backstory that was either very generic, very overdone, or just didn't tell any story because it was over and dead by the time the game began. Ideally, what you want is for backstory to come up during the game. You want it to be intertwined with ongoing character motivation and hopefully lead to a resolution. All of this without hijacking the game. Undoubtedly, uh, the character's history is important for who they are and why they are that way. But if it consists of all these little memories and events long since past that don't really tie into whatever is happening and have no continuity, then the other player characters can only explore that side of your protagonist through dialogue. If everything is in the past and doesn't matter for whatever is happening now, then you can't show your story. You can only talk about it. And where is the conflict? Characters need conflict because stories need conflict, both external and internal. So here's what I'm proposing. Don't think of backstory as something the character has left behind, but think of it as something ongoing. Instead of saying the character was in love with someone, say they are in love with someone right now. In games where characters uh, roam the land and travel constantly, dialogue and campfire talk are probably the most common way they will get to know each other's stories. But in a more static game where the uh, characters have all of their social connections and resources at their disposal, it's best to think of backstory as details and history of the ongoing story. There's this thing writers always say, make your character want or need something as soon as the story begins. Bring a conflict that demands resolution into the foreground, no matter how small. That conflict and the details of it will say a lot about the character. As always, let's look at some examples of what backstory looks like without this approach and what changes when we give it continuity and turn it into motivation. Okay, I'm thinking of a character who went to school at school number three. Growing up, he had a beautiful, loving family, and he still has, a beautiful, loving family which encouraged him to follow his dreams. He loves his parents very much. Uh, He has a girlfriend who always understands him and is gorgeous. He is doing pretty well financially. His dream was to become a martial artist, so he trained endlessly and he won multiple competitions becoming a master. He works as a self-defense instructor and routinely steps in when conflicts arise on the street, standing up to bullies and criminals and protecting the helpless and needy. As the story begins, the character, whose life is just peachy, is going to wait patiently for the storyteller to throw something at him because his story is lacking any kind of conflict. He will undoubtedly tell the other characters about his parents and girlfriend, but these elements probably won't come up in the adventure that lies ahead of the character. So they don't really matter to the story that is about to be told. This backstory works, you can run with it, it's, it's a really nice martial arts guy, but it's narratively dead unless the GM wants to actively use it in the game and will probably do that without any hints from the player, who didn't really think too much about it because they want to see what the GM is going to throw at them. Now let's see the other side, which involves actively creating story threads the GM and players can help explore if they feel like it. And if not, we still have a a character who can roll with the game. So I'm thinking of a character who always wanted to travel, but stayed in his hometown to look after his parents who are now old and need both medical and financial help. 
He is indeed a phenomenal martial artist and does work as a self-defense instructor, something he enjoys very much. But a knee injury he suffered recently is restricting his ability. He is struggling financially, trying to help his parents in their time of need since they have always uh, supported him and his dreams. As a matter of fact, um, let's up the stakes. Uh, he is in debt to some less than reputable people and he is so ashamed of being in this situation that he hasn't even told his girlfriend, which is something he wants to do very much, but he is afraid she won't understand. Uh, he can make a quick buck, a good quick buck, putting in work for his loan shark. But this is against everything he stands for, right? Protecting the weak and being a good, lawful individual. So he has refused these uh, criminal jobs in the past, these, these job offers. But the temptation is ever present. He needs money both to pay off his debt and to keep helping his parents. Also, he has not told his girlfriend anything, but what if someone else runs their mouth and she finds out anyway? Whatever will he do? See? This example kickstarts the story. It immediately throws in a conflict the GM can use without needing to prepare who knows what to make the game work. Or at least start. Of course the GM can totally do whatever they want, but now they know exactly what the character needs and what is most likely to care about. They have personal inner motivation for this character, and this creates consistent uh, consistency and shows who the protagonist is. It is very unlikely for the character to not care about the quest being thrown at them if said quest solves, at least in part, a conflict that is eating away at them. So the GM doesn't need to gamble on his story. How will this work? Will they care about this? The starting point is already there. The character needs money, he wants to earn it fair and square without betraying his morals, and if there's any magic involved here, maybe he can get his injury looked at or somehow cured. If the story involves traveling, sure, the character's on board, he always wanted to travel. We said that, right? He always wanted to travel. But what about his parents? So now he can negotiate with the NPCs in a way that is meaningful and solves at least part of the issue. Hey, take care of my parents, find someone who can take care of them, or give me some money. I don't know, I'm more or less making this up on the fly. But the point is, it is much better to have a starting conflict for the character than it is to have them just exist in the game world and wait for something to happen to them, right? Um, there is always the risk of having that personal conflict overpower the game, though. So make sure to consult with your GM before making the final choice. Can they work with it? Does it help them? Does it hinder them? Does it hijack the game? I hope not. Ideally, you want this to complement the game and the plot. And say something about the character uh, making, making the other players... Uh, involved with your story and of course allowing you to return the favor and be involved in their stories. If the game is short, however, the GM, if the GM has something specific in mind, no problem there. You can always bring a character who has no ongoing conflicts at the start of the game and simply explore the conflict your GM has planned for you. And hey, you can always make a character conflict throughout the game as well. Just make sure the protagonist is consistent and doesn't suddenly start worrying and complaining about things that really weren't an issue until last session and didn't affect them at all until now. So my go-to character conflicts as a player are the character is ill or dying and they are racing the clock to find a cure, they need money urgently or bad things will happen to them and their family, they are in a feud of whatever nature with a powerful NPC, 
this one is always fun if the GM is on board, um, they are doing something against their will, either because of manipulation, mundane or magical, or out of a necessity they don't yet understand. And the last one, um, they are in recovery from something that might just come back to haunt them. And that's my go-to uh, conflict list. So thank you very much for listening. And hopefully trying this approach will make games more interesting. Because I would not recommend something that doesn't work for me. And uh, having that internal character motivation really has taken games to another level of depth and immersion for me. So take care, have fun, and don't forget to play.